This is Jay Gatsby. This is Daisy Buchanan. You know them from The Great Gatsby. You may remember this iconic look. And who could forget this stunning look? But are they accurate? We asked this fashion historian. Hi, I'm Rice Britannia, and I'm a fashion historian. To walk us through what The Great Gatsby got right and what they got mm, mostly right. First up, Jay Gatsby's pink suit. Jay Gatsby is the protagonist of the film and is portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio. The famous pink suit is first seen towards the climax of the film and has become synonymous with Jay Gatsby. The pink suit is given special mention in the text, and it is significant because it's ultimately what gives away Gatsby's nouveau riche status. And you found he was an Oxford man? Oxford, New Mexico, he wears a pink suit for Christ's sake. Tom Buchanan comments on it and says that he can't really be an Oxford man, which implies that this suit is a little too stylish. It is a summer daytime look appropriate for the leisure class. Still, the character's wardrobe is particularly fashion forward and even bordering on flamboyant, especially when compared to the more traditional ensembles worn by characters like Tom Buchanan. The pink suit is based on a design from the Brooks Brothers archive. The partnership with Brooks Brothers was very fitting, especially considering that the book's author, F. Scott Fitzgerald, was a loyal customer to the brand. In the early 20th century, Brooks Brothers sought to break from the British sartorial tradition and establish a uniquely American look, which this costume exemplifies. The brand ultimately provided hundreds of suits for the film, from the leading characters to the background actors. Literally every single suit you see is Brooks Brothers. So let's explore this famous pink suit layer by layer. We'll start with a shirt. He wears a white button-down shirt, likely made of cotton. It has French cuffs, which are turned back and fastened using cufflinks. Catherine Martin chose vibrant hues for Gatsby's wardrobe, which accurately reflects the era's trends in men's shirts. When Daisy visits Gatsby's home, he shows off his collection of fine shirts. In this scene, we see them tossed down in a colorful cascade of fabric. Gatsby's shirt features an attached soft collar, which was becoming more fashionable in the 1920s. Previously, shirts had a short stand collar, to which a detachable stiff collar would be affixed via collar studs. These were heavily starched and tended to be uncomfortable, so they gradually fell out of style. England had a long tradition of sartorial excellence in menswear, which Gatsby clearly wanted to be associated with. I have a man in England who buys me clothes. Still, there were American purveyors of quality menswear that emerged in the early 20th century. One highly regarded American company was Arrow, which specialized in collars and shirts. The Arrow Collar Man became quite the sex symbol in the early 20th century, which makes Daisy's comparison to Gatsby a high compliment. You always look so cool, like the advertisement of the man in Times Square. For our next layer, trousers and suspenders. In the film, Gatsby wears flat front trousers. However, pleated varieties were becoming more fashionable during this period. Trousers tended to sit higher on the natural waistline and generally had a looser fit. They typically featured a wide cuff at the hem and were shortened to the instep so as to not break the strong crease that ran down the center of the leg. If worn as part of a three-piece suit, trousers would be held up using suspenders. They were attached using buttons sewn to the interior of the waistband. We see Gatsby in his suspenders at the end of the film, after he has removed his jacket and vest for the night. They look to be made of striped silk, which is fitting for an upper-class gentleman. Every suit needs a nice necktie, right? Gatsby wears a standard four-in-hand necktie with wide diagonal stripes in salmon and burgundy. The four-in-hand necktie would eventually become the standard tie that's still worn today. The direction of the tie stripes is particularly interesting because it perhaps is a nod to the character's desire to be perceived as an Oxford man. The stripes on Gatsby's tie run from the left shoulder to the right hip in accordance with a British tradition. American ties were known to have stripes that ran in the opposite direction. This was a style made popular by Brooks Brothers in 1920. As soft, unstarched collars rose in popularity, 
collar pins were necessary to hold the points in place and to prevent them from curling up. All right, now onto our next layer, the vest. Three-piece suits were standard in menswear, and the look wouldn't be complete without a vest. Vest fronts were usually made of the same material as the jacket and the trousers. The back was never intended to be seen, so it was usually made of a lining fabric. Up next, the jacket. Gatsby wears a summer weight suit made of pale pink linen with a white pinstripe. The jacket is a single-breasted, three-button style with peak lapels, which closely resembles fashionable menswear in the 21st century. Double-breasted styles were also fashionable during the 1920s. All the suits in the film are slightly too tight to be accurate, and more closely align with tastes and tailoring from 2013. But that was the designer's intent to modernize the 1920 styles for a contemporary audience. Suits were more fitted in the late 1910s, but the early 1920s marked a transition into a more relaxed fit. By the middle of the decade, jackets had broader shoulders and a boxy cut that ended at the hip line. This look couldn't be complete without the shoes. Light-colored shoes were appropriate for summer wear on Long Island, but they were difficult to keep clean and mostly limited to the upper class. Jay wears two-toned spectator shoes with a wingtip design, which were very fashionable for the early 1920s. These lace-up Oxfords were fairly standard, but Gatsby's feature a reversal of the usual color distribution. In most cases, the darker color was used for the toe cap and the heel cap, with the lighter color across the vamp. And now we have the hat. The straw boater was the definitive hat for spring and summer wear, and we see several characters wearing them throughout the movie. They were made of natural colored straw that had been stiffened to hold a distinctive shape, one with a flat crown and a wide, flat brim. The decorative exterior hat band was made of a wide grosgrain ribbon, often multicolored and striped, and it was formed into a bow on the wearer's left side. So here's what Gatsby would have looked like compared to what he wore in the film. For our next look, Daisy's party dress. Daisy Buchanan is a young socialite from the right side of the tracks. She is portrayed by actress Carrie Mulligan. She comes from money and marries the equally wealthy Tom Buchanan. A future with Gatsby was out of reach due to Daisy's elite status. When Gatsby reconnects with Daisy after five years, he invites her and her husband to a party to which she wears this party dress. The dress is a collaboration with Mucha Prada and is based on a look from Prada's spring-summer 2010 collection that featured crystal drops. Upon the film's release, it was exhibited alongside the 40 other looks Prada created with costume designer Catherine Martin. The 40 Prada looks are peppered throughout the party scenes and utilize design details often associated with 1920s evening wear, such as jeweled, sequined, and beaded embellishments, as well as jeans geometric stylines reminiscent of Art Deco architecture. Evening party attire was the flashiest category of clothing during this period. The festive clothing in these scenes best represent how the glamour of the 1920s have been immortalized in cultural memory. Daisy Buchanan is Gatsby's object of affection and a jazz age icon in her own right. Let's get into the glitz and glamour layer by layer. First up, the dress. Where women wanted to have a voluptuous hourglass shape just decades before, the 1920s brought about a taste for a more androgynous, slender figure. The fashionable silhouette of 1920s women's wear had a rectangular shape that was suspended straight down from the shoulders. The waistline on such garments was lowered to the level of the hips, which helped to de-emphasize the body's natural curves in the torso. Evening dresses were typically made of sheer, delicate fabrics, which were then elaborately adorned with beads, sequins, and embroidery. These embellishments helped to weigh down the fabric, especially around the hem, to prevent the garment from clinging to the body. The gossamer nature of these fabrics meant that often an additional matching opaque slip was necessary to be worn underneath. 
Yes, skirts were shorter than they had been up to that point in modern fashion history, but they wouldn't necessarily be considered short by our standards in the 21st century. Hemlines were actually longer during the beginning and end of the 1920s, and they only really rose during the middle years of the decade. Skirts were shortest around the year 1926, when they reached just below the knee. Up next, the shoes. With shortened skirts came more elaborately decorated shoes. Evening shoes during this period were made from luxurious materials like metallic leather and lustrous silks. They also were often decorated with jeweled buckles. One particularly fashionable style featured a T-strap. These shoes had open quarters and a horizontal strap that cut across the ankle, intersecting with a vertical strap. This style allowed for the shoe to be securely fastened to the foot. This was necessary to accommodate the latest dance crazes like the Charleston, which was fast-paced and energetic, and also incorporated a lot of fancy footwork. Glistening shoes brought the focus of the eye downwards, drawing attention to the exposed legs. And now, hair and makeup. Daisy wears a bobbed hairstyle, which is another hallmark of 1920s women's fashion. Both Daisy and Jordan sport styles that are especially cropped and resemble the popular shingle bob style, which was tapered in the back to reveal the hairline at the neck and curled to a point in the front towards the cheekbone. Another fashionable hairstyle of the period featured finger waves, or Marcel waves, which were created using a pair of hot curling tongs. During the 1920s, cosmetics became more widely accepted thanks to beauty innovators like Max Factor. In this era, women wore bolder colors of rouge and lipstick. Eyes were darkened, and eyebrows were dramatically thinned and arched. Daisy's makeup is relatively understated for the occasion. Jordan's makeup, on the other hand, with her smoky eye, feels more appropriate. Our next layer, jewelry. Daisy's jeweled headband is a product of a collaboration with Tiffany and & Company and is based on a design from their archive. Jeweled headbands and tiaras were fashionable for evening wear and tended to sit low on the forehead. Another staple of the 1920s, long beaded necklaces, often pearls for those that could afford them. These long necklaces were intended to hang straight in order to emphasize the flattened bust line of the era. Daisy doesn't wear a string of pearls around her neck, but she does wear pearl bracelets that connect to a ring. This design is a bit more contemporary than historical and was sold as part of Tiffany & Company's Great Gatsby line. And to finish off our look, outerwear. Daisy's ensemble is made complete by a short capelet with a fluffy feather collar. One particularly fashionable style in the 1920s was the cocoon coat, which was a type of opera coat that was meant to envelop the wearer. Since this movie takes place during the summer, a shorter, lightweight wrap would make more sense. So would you say this look is mostly accurate? I wouldn't necessarily call this look accurate based on its fit and use of contemporary materials, but I have to admit that it does capture the spirit and the essence of 1920s evening wear. So here's what Daisy would have looked like compared to what she wore in the film. So what are your takeaways, Risa? The costumes are not historically accurate but they do capture the spirit of the 1920s using a modern vocabulary, which was the overall goal of the film. The priority of this adaptation was to connect the past and the present, which is evident in the costumes born out of collaborations with contemporary fashion brands. The designer brand partnerships made the film more commercially marketable, and ultimately more relatable to the audience. Infusion of contemporary style is ultimately what keeps this classic tale relevant each time it is adapted. The 1920s continue to be present in the 2020s with a resurgence of Gatsby-inspired fashions and Jazz Age parties galore, which just goes to show that the glitz, glamor, and exuberance of Gatsby's world is ultimately timeless.